Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. My name is Becky and this is my mom, Susan. Hi there. We are gonna be in the kitchen today prepping for a huge Easter and birthday celebration. We're gonna combine the two. There's so many people in our family. Typically what we do is whatever birthdays are in the month, if there's a holiday, we celebrate those birthdays and the holiday at the same time. So it's my sister-in-law's birthday and Easter this time. So the menu we're gonna be doing today is a pork stuffed loin roast. I watched, I used to watch YouTube years ago and there was this butcher that I followed and he was British. I don't even know if I could find him anymore, but he would do all these really cool stuffed roasts. So we are gonna do a sausage apple stuffed pork loin roast. And it's the loin that I got from the whole hog that I purchased and I had it butchered specifically so that at some point we could make this recipe together. And then the sides that are gonna go along with that, we're gonna make garlic, Parmesan mashed potatoes, roasted asparagus and broccoli. We're gonna make hollandaise sauce, deviled eggs. We're gonna do empty tomb rolls. This is my mom's recipe. Well, it's my roll recipe, but it's her technique. She's setting up because she's gonna be making two cakes. She's gonna be making my grandma's famous cake that she always made at Easter. It's called, I have to look it up, Grandma Jones's Chinese Wedding Cake. And it's a yellow cake with banana pudding and whipped cream and she's gonna decorate it. And then she's gonna make my sister-in-law's new favorite cake, which is a strawberry cake. And, oh, I didn't tell you, the deviled eggs are gonna be super cute and they're gonna look like little chicks. We're gonna decorate them with eyes and a beak and it's gonna be really cute. And I think that's everything. How many people are we having? 16? Uh, you totaled it up, I believe. Whatever that total up totals up to. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, A, a booster and a high chair. As About well. 16 people are gonna be here. Well, that'll be great fun. So I'm gonna get going and getting the stuffing for the pork loin going now, and my mom is gonna go ahead and she's gonna get going right on the cakes. So I'm gonna get going actually before I get the stuffing on the deviled eggs, because those can get be cooking while I do other things. So I brought three dozen of my own chicken eggs from my chickens for today. I'm used to cooking my hard boiled eggs in the instant pot, so I just looked up how long to cook them on the stove and it says at a low simmer for 10 to 12 minutes. So I was looking at different pictures of what I want the yolk to look like, and I think we're gonna go more toward the 12 minute because I want those yolks to be pretty done. I don't know if I mentioned this is the day before the party. So today is Friday and we are gonna be celebrating Saturday. So we're gonna be trying to do as much of the prep today to make tomorrow easier. Now I did forget we are also doing a fruit platter when we were shopping. We kind of decided to do that last minute. So I'm gonna prep some of the fruit for that as well today. But now let's get the filling for the sausage stuffing done. We need to peel two apples. I can leave all the links to all the recipes down in the description box. And unfortunately, my mom and I just went shopping and we forgot to buy celery. So I'm going to just do extra onion and a little extra bread. I'm going to save all these veggie scraps to give to my chickens. They'll greatly appreciate it. So I'm gonna put them in this bowl and all this will be going home with me so they can have a nice Easter feast as well. When I go to dice up the onion and apple, I'm gonna dice it as small as I can. And then when we cook it down, because the pieces are gonna be so small, there won't be any big chunks that are gonna to try to fall out of our pork loin. I want it to be small so that everything stays inside the pork loin. This is also sausage from that whole hog that I purchased back in October. And so we're gonna use this for the stuffing as well. This is Italian sausage. And I'm gonna get this cooking while I finish prepping the filling part. Make sure that's turned on. The recipe that we're following calls for a three pound roast. Well, my mom and I didn't weigh our roast, but what we did is we took one pound of that Italian sausage that I had and we felt it next to the whole roast that we have. The roast is frozen right now and it's thawing in the sink in some cold water. And I think that roast is about six pounds. So before I started cutting up this apple, I did add one more pound of ground sausage to the pan to cook because what we're gonna do is double the stuffing recipe. And if we have a little extra stuffing, I'll just cook that on the side and then that can just be eaten on the side. 
We also need to chop up some fresh garlic, thyme, rosemary, and sage. Our eggs are simmering, so I'm gonna set the timer for 12 minutes. Over here, that's getting pretty browned on that side. We need some fresh rosemary, and my mom has some rosemary out in the garden. Oh, sure, that's, I was just gonna break it, but this is probably better. So I can show you out here. Wow, this is my mom's mint, and it's definitely growing very well. And here's her rosemary. So we're gonna get some of this. Dad, what are you working on? Uh, getting the beds ready for uh, planting. This is my parents' garden area. It's super cute. Just uh, prepping everything? Just prepping, getting ready, and getting the weeds out. Awesome. Your rhubarb's looking really good. Yeah, I didn't bother that. Just leaving that alone. Yep, that'll just grow. The weeds took over, though, so that's my job right now. Good job. Heading back. I should probably hold those scissors that way. <laughs> Heading back. Oh, it smells so good. Mmm. I'm excited about this dinner. This is, this recipe has been a long time coming. I've wanted to make this for a long time. Are you ready to make the cakes? I'm working on it here. I had some eggs we took camping and one of them broke. Question. Yeah. I don't need to make this cake recipe as fancy as the yellow cake recipe, it called for using only yolks. I don't care, I can use whole eggs. So do I use half? Like it says 12 yolks. Can't I just use six half, six whole eggs? I don't know, but I don't know why not. Uh, should I Google it? Yeah, I would Google it, <laughs> I would Google it. Yes, you can, you get the best of both using an egg yolk and the white, the whole egg. Whites aren't as good for emulsification when using um, in a salad dressing or a sauce you want to emulsify, but for baking, whole eggs are just as good as egg yolks. So I will use six whole eggs versus 12 yolks. This is going to be a pineapple flavored cake, and I'm actually not going to sift them together, sift the dry ingredients. I'm going to um, whisk them. Hey, and as soon as I've used up this Morton salt, I am ordering Redmond Real Salt. I'm whisking the dry ingredients now. Okay, I'm going to beat the eggs or the butter and sugar together now. It's two and a quarter cups of sugar. My butter is still pretty hard, so I'm going to start it really slow so the sugar doesn't sling all over the room. While my mom is prepping the cakes, I am getting an ice bath ready because my hard boiled eggs are done and I wanna get them out of the boiling water and into a water bath to stop the cooking process. This is how my mom and I typically work in the kitchen. We both are doing two different things and trying to save time. Now that I'm working on the eggs, my mom is gonna strain pineapple. She needs the juice to make the cake she needs the juice to make the cake and then on one of the layers on top of the cake is the actual crushed pineapple. So she doesn't want the pineapple that's gonna sit on top of the cake to be too moist. So she tries to get as much of that moisture out as possible. I need a little more ice for the eggs and I'm dropping ice. <laughs> Now that the sugar and butter are creamed together, she had that whipping for probably three to four minutes. She's gonna add her tablespoon of vanilla and her six eggs, and she's gonna add one egg at a time and let the mixer beat well between each additional egg she's adding. Now that the sausage is cooked all the way through, I'm gonna take it out of this pan and I am gonna chop it up a little bit more. My mom doesn't have one of those meat choppers, but she's got a way she does it that works really well, so I'll show you how she does it since she doesn't have one of those. Perfect. She uses a pastry knife to do it. So we're gonna do that in just a second. The recipe stated not to remove the grease from the pan, so I didn't do that, and I'm supposed to saute the onions and apples in that fat so we have that now on the stove and i'm going to put a little bit of salt in order to help draw out that moisture and help it cook a little bit faster 
Okay, all I need for the liquid in this recipe that's one and a times is one and an eighth cup, and I have more that I drained off the pineapple. So I'm measuring it into this measuring cup, and then I'm going to add it to the sugar, eggs, and butter mixture, alternating with the dry ingredients. The original recipe from my grandma calls for a box cake, and my mom wanted to make the cake from scratch today, and so she is just substituting the milk in this recipe for the pineapple juice, and that's what you're supposed to do if you make this cake with a box cake. And then she is one and a halfing this recipe because she is going to have one of these cakes for our family dinner tomorrow on Saturday, and then she's gonna bring one to my sister's Easter on Sunday. Okay, because I'm not making layer cakes, I'm going to actually serve these cakes in these pans. I'm not going to do parchment paper. I normally do parchment paper for layer cakes, but I'm just going to spray a little oil in here. Then I'm going to divide it two-thirds, one-third, and we'll see how close I can do that. Of course, it doesn't have to be perfect. Now because I'm serving the cake in the dish I'm baking it in, I am going to be careful to wipe up any of the cake batter on the side because it will be brown and crusty looking. My mom's gonna get those cakes right in the oven. I'm still waiting on the stuffing, so I'm gonna take a minute to get all the potatoes peeled. My mom is making two cakes, so now that she's done with one, and has one in the oven, she's gonna go ahead and get started on the second one, the strawberry cake. Oh, this is smelling quite cooked, burnt. Is it almost burnt? We may have burnt, I may have burnt. I'm not used to a gas stove, so I'm gonna let this cool down just a little bit and I'm gonna taste it, because it's pretty dark. It might be okay, though. Turn it. Yeah, I have to restart it. Shoot. Oh, I'm so sorry. Turn. All right, let's do this again. So the chickens are gonna get a nice sauteed onions and apples. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil and then we'll saute up the onions and apples in this instead. Okay, we're back where we started. I turned this down just a little bit and we're gonna keep a closer eye on this. Now back to the potatoes. How pretty they are. Really you don't need to decorate eggs when you have your own chickens. Look how pretty. The first cake my mom made was a yellow cake base, and the cake that she's making now for the strawberry cake is going to be a white cake base. First thing I did was beat this butter for probably seven to eight minutes while I was measuring the wet ingredients and the dry, dry ingredients, and look how white it is. Isn't that beautiful? Then it said to, this is the tricky part that makes it a strawberry cake, I'm going to whisk into the dry ingredients the strawberry jello. Oh, it smells like strawberry. It does. It smells really, oh, the dust was in the air and it got on my tongue. I can taste it. It tastes like strawberry. Okay. So it's not gonna be super pink. It's well, bit... it's dry. It's not wet yet. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Yes, yes. That makes sense. Okay, now I beat the butter. I may be able to, may have been able to change this recipe to actually doing it all butter, but the recipe called for vegetable oil and butter, so I'm just going to follow the recipe this time. So it was slowly pour the vegetable oil, vegetable oil into the butter until it's all emulsified. So my recipe for the stuffing, we need to ground up three slices of bread. So I have three slices here. I'm gonna chop and then I'm gonna stick them in my mom's Vitamix and then we have to toast these. So for the stuffing, we have to toast these breadcrumbs in a little bit of butter. So I have two tablespoons of butter in this little pot here, or 
pan and I'm going to put the breadcrumbs in here. And this is the last major component to this stuffing. The next step on the cake is to add the vanilla and to alternate the dry ingredients with the wet ingredients. And then the cake batter will come together and there will be one more step after she mixes these two ingredients together. I was just thinking this batter looks so thick. And then I remembered I didn't put the eggs in yet. Oh, <laughs> did you forget the eggs? No, I have them right here. Are you supposed to put them at the end? Yes, you whip the egg whites oh. and then fold them in. So I will use whole, I will use egg whites, not, um, whole, not eggs. whole eggs. I don't know how you separate eggs. I've seen little gadgets, and I am kind of the kitchen gadget queen, but I just use my hands. I usually just use two eggshells, but that works too. Yeah, well, I have stabbed the egg yolk with oh, the yeah. eggshell, and oh, oh there's my timer. For the cake? You want, yeah, you want to look and see what it looks like? My hands are all covered with egg yolks, egg whites. Oh, not done at all way too jiggly. We're looking a lot better so far on these. I do want them to cook down quite a bit. So they do have probably about 10 more minutes cooking. And then these are starting to toast. So I'm gonna keep a close eye on these breadcrumbs because I could see these burning pretty quickly. I have my whisk on my stick blender. I can beat my eggs to a stiff point, stiff peak and not have to wash up my KitchenAid because I still have stuff in it. While my mom does that, I'm gonna start cutting up the potatoes. Soft peak. Gotta beat it more. Uh, what do you th think? I think so. There's a perfect one right there. Yeah, that's perfect. I got the potatoes all peeled and chopped up in our pot. I'm just gonna fill this up with water and then tomorrow when we're ready to cook them, we'll put them on the stove. If you cover the potatoes with water, then they're not gonna turn brown on us. So we're checking things off the list. Do you think I should peel the eggs right now? Uh, I think they're supposed to be easier to peel the fresher they are from, from being boiled. Oh, okay, then I'll do that right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, so okay. the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and get these hard boiled eggs peeled up. But I wanna check on our breadcrumbs are looking good. I've been trying to keep a close eye on those. And our stuffing is looking good. This definitely doesn't look like cake batter, but look at how uh, red it is. And, well, you can't smell it, but I can smell it. And it smells like strawberry. I'm gonna fold it from the smaller bowl into the bigger bowl. I. I think it will fold better that way. I can distribute stuff further. This is good. Our cakes are done. Oh, and I don't have to flip that one. Nope. Don't have to set a timer on that to flip it because there's going to be served right in the, those pans. Boy, I can't tell you how much it's, how strong it smells of strawberries. So I think that's good. What do you think, Beck? Yeah. It says no. don't overmix it, so no, I think good. that little bit of white's okay. Yeah. Now, because I because I'm going to make a layer cake, I used my parchment paper circles. This looks like a lot of batter for two layers, but it says two layers. It does. Should I do three? I don't know. Put. Let's try and see what it looks like. Yeah, I don't know. I might do three. Well, I think I, think I am going to do three, actually. Okay. I'm going to do three because look at that. Yeah, that looks like enough for one. Right, that's one. This one needs a little bit more. And there's a significant amount left in the bowl. Yeah, there's a lot left in there. Yeah, I think... Making three was the better option. Yeah, you have plenty there. I will make a note on my recipe. I'll okay. link these recipes too for you guys if you want them. 
we're gonna put our herbs and our garlic into our apple onion mixture and get those cooking. I wanna just cook those for about two or three minutes and then this is done, but I do wanna get those eggs peeled. So I'm gonna go do that right now. I'm gonna get these eggs peeled and I'm gonna set them on a paper towel just so that while they're in the refrigerator overnight, they don't sit in any excess moisture or anything like that. And these are fresh eggs and let me tell you, this is a journey we go on to peel these eggs. I saw it on Pinterest, is you take the hard boiled egg, you put it in a, a jar with uh, water, close it up, and then you give it to your four or five year old child to shake. But we don't happen to have any four or five year old children around here, so we will have to do it ourselves. Is it working? It didn't work, so she's gonna try cracking the <laughs> shell. These are fresh eggs, and fresher eggs always are harder to peel because sometimes eggs that you buy in the store can be weeks, if not months old. And what happens, an egg starts to evaporate. The inside of it starts to evaporate. And that's what makes it easier to peel because there's less stuff inside it. And there becomes a little air pocket between the membrane and the actual egg white. So much for the Pinterest idea. It did crack the egg, but it, I saw it. I don't know, they Photoshopped it or something, <laughs> or maybe they shook harder and it ended up a pile of peels and a lovely egg. It didn't work for me. We might not be able to do the little chicks because these egg shells are really sticking to this egg white. I didn't grab yesterday's eggs. I grabbed their probably five days old. The Instant Pot is the way to cook hard boiled eggs. I never have an issue, even if they're fresh, fresh eggs in the Instant Pot. These eggs are gonna have texture. They're gonna be rustic hard boiled eggs. Yeah, yours looks a lot better than mine does. I know, but I'm, <laughs> I've only peeled a quarter of one. Well, I, I'm i only at three quarters, and I, I was working on this one when you were shaking it. Well, my mom very patiently and tediously worked on peeling those eggs. I'm gonna finish the stuffing for the pork. So I put our breadcrumbs, our ground sausage, and we're gonna put our onions and our apples in here, and we're gonna give that a good mix. This tedious peeling of eggs is why Mark's sister always brought the deviled eggs. <laughs> and you don't like deviled eggs. And I didn't volunteer to do them myself. Well, they don't always take that much effort. Dad, do you like deviled eggs? No. My mom wasn't even gonna have them on the menu until I got here and I said, we cannot have an Easter without deviled eggs because my parents don't like them, but trust me, I think all those will be gone. People like deviled eggs. This is the pork loin and it's finally thawed. It took a long time to thaw. We're gonna get all this stuffed tomorrow. Slowly but surely these eggs are coming along. This is my last one that I've been working on and it is trying my patience if about, I did say so. About this one? Yeah, this That's is my the one I did. Can you guys see that? The problem is there's no air spot. Look at that. Yeah, because they're is, too fresh. That is the air spot. Next time, set aside a dozen. I should. Mark them and put them in the back of the refrigerator, the back of the counter. I have to go. So we will be back tomorrow to finish assembling everything. We've got to stuff the pork loin, make all the vegetables. I didn't get to the pineapple. My mom said she's going to get that. I have got a dinner tonight that I'm going to across town it's gonna to take me at least an hour to get across town right now so unfortunately i don't get to help my mom clean today normally i stick around Too bad. I, know. <laughs> I got the fun part and then i get to leave but i'll help tomorrow with the cleaning yeah it's not bad no we got a lot done so that's good so the cakes in the oven are going to be a little bit difficult to tell when they're done because they're pink look at that is i can't leave it open too long but yeah, aren't those beautiful i'm glad i put it in three pans yeah it would have boiled over yeah Smell, oh, it smells good when you just open that. Yeah, there's all these dishes and stuff, unfortunately, I'm leaving, but we got the stuffing all done. This was a huge accomplishment. We're gonna stuff the pork loin tomorrow. That is gonna be quite a feat. Okay, my Pinterest idea did not work for peeling these eggs. I have also seen putting baking soda in the water. I've seen buy the eggs a month in advance. You tell me. What's the best way to peel? Because there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve more eggs at five minutes a piece. 
that's a long time. This is a labor of love and I don't even like them. <laughs> So thank you guys for hanging out with us today as we started prepping for Easter. If you guys are new around here, please consider subscribing because tomorrow I'm gonna come back and we are going to prep everything and you don't wanna miss that. That will be the next video that comes out. If you guys enjoyed this video, I greatly appreciate a thumbs up. Thanks mom for letting me come out and hang out with you. Thumbs up, it was great fun. <laughs> and I can't wait to see you guys next time. If you wanna watch videos of me and my mom prepping for lots of parties, I'll put some videos here and I can't wait to see you guys next time. Bye guys.